Welcome to the How to Administer a CASP Test from Start to Finish demonstration video, sponsored by the California Department of Education, or CDE. This video will teach you how to administer a test for the California Assessment of Student Performance and Progress, or CASP. This video demonstrates the administration of the Smarter Balance for Mathematics Assessment for Grade 8. However, the steps in the video are applicable to any grade level for which the following assessments are administered. Smarter Balanced for English Language Arts and Literacy, or ELA and Mathematics, California Science Test, or CAST, and California Spanish Assessment, or CSA. Site CASP coordinators and test administrators should work together to determine the most appropriate testing environment for students based on the number of devices available, the number of students in each grade level, and the estimated time needed to complete each test. Use your knowledge of individual students to help determine the size of your testing groups. Headphones are required for the listening portion of the Smarter Balance for ELA assessment, some performance tasks, and also for the listening and speaking items of the CSA. Headphones are also required for students using text-to-speech, speech-to-text, or audio glossaries. Prior to testing, consider universal tools that are available for all students, designated supports that can be provided to students on the basis of need, and accommodations as specified by an Individualized Education Program, or IEP, or Section 504 plan that could necessitate testing some students in a separate setting. Note that students with the most significant cognitive disabilities take the alternate assessments if it is required by their IEP. An alternate assessment is administered one-on-one, -on -one, in person, and not in a group setting. Critical information for test administration, how to prepare, what testing resources are available, and what you are allowed to say is located in the printable Online Administration Instructions document. The Online Administration Instructions are located on the Administer a Test Session webpage where they are labeled Script. We will be following the steps and the say statements in the Online Administration Instructions document. Please follow the unique instructions for each assessment. Prior to testing, ensure all student devices have the most up-to-date secure browser. The test administrator can create a test session on the test administrator's device in the test administrator interface before students begin testing. As a security measure, test administrators are automatically logged off the test administrator interface after 30 minutes of test administrator user inactivity and student inactivity in the test session. This will result in the test session closing. Follow these steps to create a test session and generate a unique session ID. On screen now is the home page of the CASP and LPAC website. First, navigate to the CASP and LPAC website on a preferred web browser. Select the Test Administrator Interface link in the Systems link menu in the navigation bar. Log on to the Test Administrator Interface. Select the Start an In-Person Session button. If it is not already populated, the test administrator must select the appropriate institution from the drop-down list in this message and select the Go button. Select the test name. To expand a collapsed test group, select the plus sign icon. To collapse a test group, select the minus sign icon. To expand the list of all tests, select the Expand All Outward Arrows icon. To select individual tests, mark the checkbox for each test to be included. Depending on the time of year and the user's role, all tests may not be available in the Test Administrator interface. So, users won't always find all these options available for test selection. Prior to testing, all users who will administer tests must log into the Test Operations Management System, or TOMS, to sign security affidavits. If an affidavit remains unsigned, only interim assessments will be visible on the test selection screen. A test will only become available in the test administrator interface when the test administration window is open for that test and if the user has the appropriate role to administer that test. Once the Start Operational Session button is selected, a visual warning will let the administrator know that a summative assessment is about to be administered. Select OK. Continue with the test administration 
or if a summative assessment was selected unintentionally, exit from the test administrator interface by closing the browser. The session ID is automatically generated. Write the session ID in a place where all students can clearly refer to it during group administrations. The current test session ID also appears on the test administrator interface screensaver when the screensaver is active. Ensure each student has a testing device with access to the secure browser. Make certain each workstation has headphones and other required resources for the test that's being administered. Teachers can prepare devices ahead of time if the group is smaller. Read the first part of the administration script that explains the test rules about answering questions, pausing the test, the structure of the test, what happens when answers have been submitted, and all other test rules. Read it verbatim. Today, you will be taking the Smarter Balance. Provide logon tickets to each student. The logon tickets should provide the student's statewide student identifier, or SSID, and their first name as shown in Tom's. It is also permissible to include a photo of the student or include the student's last name with the logon information as additional safeguards to ensure that students receive the correct logon information. Note that logon tickets are secure testing materials and should be securely destroyed after testing. Read the administration script telling students to open their device and confirm that their headphones are plugged in. Read it exactly as it is written. At this point, I would like for you all to open your Chromebooks. Read the administration script that explains how to log on to the test and how to enter a student's SSID and test session ID exactly as it is written. Now that your Chromebooks are open and your headphones are plugged in, read the administration script that explains how to sign in to the test and what to do if any of the information is incorrect. Read it verbatim. Now select Sign In. Read the administration script that explains that you will be walking around to help them sign in exactly as it is written. At this point in time, I'm going to walk around and take a look at your Chromebook. Read the administration script that explains how to select the correct text, including the portion that tells them to wait while you approve each of their tests. Read it verbatim. On the next screen, please select the Mathematics Grade 8. Ensure all students have successfully started the correct tests and are now waiting for the test administrator's approval. Approve students to test by selecting the Approve checkmark icon in the Actions column for individual students or the Approve All Students button for each group of tests. Select the See Details I icon to view the student's settings for the current test. For example, if the student had been assigned the designated support to turn off any universal tools, the test administrator can toggle the universal tools on and off. Custom in the See Details column indicates the student has been assigned test settings. It is important that test administrators and test examiners get an up-to-date test settings report for their students from the site coordinators to verify test settings displayed in the test administrator interface. If you know a student's test settings are incorrect, deny the student by selecting the Deny X icon. Contact the CASP test site coordinator to correct the test settings in TOMS and test the student on another day. Ensuring the test settings are correct before the student begins testing is critical to avoid the need for a test reset that may result in additional testing for the student later. Read the administration script that explains how to check the sound and video and what students should do if they cannot hear the sound or see the video. Read it exactly as it is written. Next, you should see a screen that prompts you to check that the sound and video on your computer are working. Some students may have the text-to-speech or speech-to-text resource assigned to them, which will prompt them to complete additional checks. Follow the SAY instructions for those students and assist them if needed. Read the administration script explaining how to set up and test the text-to-speech or speech-to-text resource to the individual students who have this accommodation. Read it verbatim. Next, you should see a screen that... Two accessibility resources provided to students during open test sessions are text-to-speech and speech-to-text. 
it's important to remember that when students are engaged in practice tests with text-to-speech or speech-to-text, that they are able to practice using these accessibility resources. One way is to sit side-by-side -side with the student and give those directions one-on-one, -on -one, or give the speech-to-text and text-to-speech directions to the whole group. Students that were provided these resources during the practice test sessions will be ready to use these resources for the summative assessment when they are turned on in TOMS. Read the administration script that explains what is available on the tutorial page, including help with test settings and the help guide, and the portion that tells students to select Begin Tests Now when they are ready to begin the test. Read this script exactly as it is written. Before your test appears, you will see a tutorial page. When students are testing, it is important to circulate among the students to monitor progress and assist individuals with test navigation or functionality. It is important to caution students to submit a test only when all questions have been reviewed and completed. In addition to circling the room, the test administrator monitors the test each student is taking by referring to the tests table in the test administrator interface. By default, students are listed in alphabetical order. To pin a student's information to the top of the list, select the Pin Push Pin icon in the Actions column. This feature can be used to make it easier to view the test status of select students who may need closer monitoring during their test session. If students' tests have been idle, are unexpectedly disconnected from a session, or have pending requests for print-on-demand, the Test Administrator interface will automatically separate those tests into a Tests with Potential Issues section. If a student's test is flagged as a test with potential issues, that student's information will appear with a red bar over it, and it will be placed before the information for students whose tests were previously pinned. While the Test Administrator interface is designed to refresh automatically every minute, the Test Administrator can refresh it manually at any time by selecting the Refresh Page button. If the Test Administrator notices that a student is having difficulty maintaining focus and is not progressing through the test, the Test Administrator may use the statement in the Administration script provided for helping to keep a student focused. The statement must be said verbatim. Please note that for the Computer Adaptive Test, or CAT, the CSA, and the discrete item blocks in the CAST, if students are paused longer than 20 minutes, they will be unable to go back and change their answers. As you noticed, I just approached a student that was distracted during an open test session. In order to maintain focus in your room during an open test session, it's important that you approach a child that is distracted and help them remember that it's okay to take a break and press pause for 20 minutes. If the student asks a question about the item, read the following script verbatim. Try your best. I noticed that a student had their hand raised and when I approached her, she was confused about the answer to a question. Please make sure that when you help a student that is confused about an answer to a question during an open test session, that you read the script verbatim to ensure that you are following all guidelines for a test session. When there are approximately 10 minutes left in the test session, the test administrator should give students a brief warning and explain that students shouldn't submit the test unless they have answered all questions using the administration script exactly as it is written. We are nearing the end of this session. When there's 10 minutes left remaining in an open test session, now is the time to begin reminding students to review their questions. One very important step in this process is to remind kids to finish all questions that may be in a set. A set is a page that contains more than one question. Read the administration script that explains how to pause or submit the test exactly as it is written. This test session is now over. After students have completed testing, the test administrator should log off the test administrator interface by expanding the Name drop-down list in the top right corner of the screen on the Test Administrator Interface System banner and selecting the Log Out button. Remember that the test administration demonstration you just watched is just one example of a test session for students in Grade 8 taking the Mathematics Computer Adaptive Test. 
test administrators should follow the instructions provided by the CDE to administer each assessment as the scripts can vary. Thank you for watching this test administration demonstration video. Special thank you to the Placerville Union School District and the students and staff of Markham Middle School for participating in this video demonstration.